welcome, Carol. I have been waiting anxiously for this time with you. And I know everyone is going to gain so much because I have gained so much by being mentored by you. So welcome to this, this video. Oh, thank you, Annette. This is so exciting. I think both of us have been waiting for this moment, and I trust that it's just going to explode as we share such simple concepts and yet such depth at the same time. Oh, so much. So let's dive in because we have so much ground to cover. So, you know, as a Christian, we, we seem to think that, okay, you became a Christian, now pray. And you should automatically know what that means. I mean, you could read that prayer is important in scripture, but we just don't seem to really understand that it's not automatic. It, it is something we need to learn. And that's what I'm hoping to glean from you today. Should it be automatic or how much do we need to learn about how to pray? It's an interesting question because we all know how to talk. And I think that a lot of times we try to put talking in relationship with God into a separate category when it comes to prayer, where praying is just talking. And you can walk and talk, you can eat and talk, you can do all your chores and talk. And that's what the Bible tells us, that we are to be constantly in a state of prayer. So we don't have to set aside that five minutes, okay, I'm going to pray now, what's next? How do I do this? How do I approach this? Whereas instead, I can be cooking in the kitchen and I mess up and I think, oh, Lord, help me right now to get this right. It's just conversation. And the Bible is so simple, and we often want to make it complicated, whether it's regarding prayer or any other subject. Okay. Well, Carol, let me ask you, is there a right way and a wrong way to prayer? Because you seem to have very much simplified it. It's just a conversation. But yet so many times I've been taught, pray this way. Oh, don't pray this way. You know, and so all of these do's and don'ts, they just can become combodulated in your mind. And yet, so is there a right way or a wrong way to pray? Absolutely. And I think that's the ultimate question that a lot of people are looking for. And so they go buy every book there is available on the subject of prayer. And one person is telling them how to pray this way. And one person is assuring them that they will get answers if they pray this way. And because, you know, then there's confusion, then they get another book and oh my goodness, I was doing it wrong all this time. And so of course, it's going to create that atmosphere of not understanding, not knowing. But we have to look to the source. And no matter what it is in our Christian life, we really have to look to the source. And the source is the Word of God, the Bible. How does the Bible teach us to pray? The Bible shows us so simply and so clearly with Jesus as our example, he talked with God. The apostles talked with God. The people of old in the Old Testament talked with God. It was a conversation. And there is no right or wrong way to have a conversation. Conversation is just really that simple. And the more eloquent we are, what did Jesus say about those standing in the synagogues and praying so eloquently and wanting to be heard by their neighbors and friends and the pastor and whoever else, when really it's just conversation, as basic and as simple as it is. And it doesn't matter what we are asking God for, it's still a conversation. Where we get into the do's and don'ts and how's and whatever is when we get into the specifics. So once we have established that we are having a conversation with God, then let's get into the specifics. How do I pray for healing? How do I pray for this? How do I pray for that? And again, our source is always the word. It shows us how to pray for these different situations in our lives. I appreciate that. And you, you still keep it very simple, which is what I've always loved. 
But I think there's still a few people out there that are struggling with what you just said. And what I mean by that, so I can just say anything I want and God will hear me and God will answer me. Is that what you're saying? God responds to two things, faith and his word. If you go to God and you're begging and pleading and and weeping and moaning and complaining and all those other things, there's nowhere in the word where it tells us that he responds to that. He responds to his word and he responds to faith. So what I mean by that, and again, it's still very simple. We have a situation that we are in. We find the answer first in the word. And as our course that's on, on your website says, pray the answer, not the problem. And so we're not going to God in a spirit of, of uh, trouble or, con or feeling we're going to be condemned or any of those other things that you know, hoard over us sometimes, but we're going to him with the attitude of there's already an answer in the word. I have it right here. And we pray that answer. In other words, we're praying his word back to him. And so, yes, it is that simple. And there's every situation we could possibly have, there is an answer in the word. So we pray that and that builds our faith because where does faith come from? Faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God. So what we are hearing is our even our own speaking it forth, speaking that word. We are hearing that word and we're applying that word to our lives, to the situation and we're applying it in prayer. Heavenly Father, your word says, and I choose to believe what your word says. It's circumstances don't matter. Nothing else matters. Your word supersedes all these things. And so again, basic, basic, basic. Okay, now you said basic a couple times, but yet I know, and I keep saying this because I know the people who are responding on this YouTube and podcast channel. I know the people's questions in our inner circle coaching group. Most of us don't get the basic. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. Okay. So just now you mentioned we pray his word and I totally agree with you. And so many things changed my life when I really just understood that simple concept, but many people are brand new to Christianity or They've been a Christian for so many years, yet they never understood the foundational elements of their faith. So to me, that's still a babe in Christ. They still like, well, I don't know what she's talking about. You know, how do I pray the word? I don't know where my situation is in God's word. How do I find that? And how do I, how do I pray that back? That seems very complicated. So if you were talking to someone who just the last year accepted Christ as their savior, and they're kind of wondering about this prayer thing they keep hearing about, yet they don't know God's word. They don't know where to find a verse that pertains to where they are or what's going on. How would you talk to them? That's what concordances are for. Okay, now that's a, that's a, um, that's a big word for someone who's a new Christian. So I know, know that's why I threw that in. In <laughs> other words, there are so many helps that we can get as a new Christian without having those resources that we've maybe had for 10, 15, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. And so we go to the different helps that are available and let's say look up all the scriptures that uh, we want to hear about healing. Let's say this healing that we want in our lives or that we need in our lives. And so we start looking at those scriptures. And what happens when you do that is one scripture almost inevitably will stand out. It'll jump off the page. It'll hit you smack between the eyes and go, that's what I need right there. And the revelation comes that, wow, I didn't know that the Bible said that. That's exactly what I need for my situation. And so we take that verse or series of verses and we literally incorporate them into our prayers. Thank you, God, that your Bible, your word says that I am healed because and whatever verse it is that he gave us. 
And so what that does is when we are searching a scripture, looking for specific scriptures, our faith builds. Because as we are reading the word and studying whatever it is that we need to for our particular situation, and those scriptures just pop out on that page and we begin to incorporate them, our faith builds. And it builds to the point where it blocks out the negativities. It blocks out the, the doubt. It blocks out the fear because God's word always supersedes those if we allow it and we choose to believe it. And that is the key. We can hear all the scriptures forever from now till kingdom come. But if we choose not to believe them and say, ah, that's a bunch of nonsense. I don't believe that for a minute. It's not going to happen because God always couples his word with your faith to create the answer. And that is praying the answer. Yeah. And we're going to help. The, it does. That's that. I think a lot of people are going to be like, okay, that's much better. But I mean, <laughs> hold on for just a second with that answer though, because what you just talked about praying the answer I think we really need to delve into that a lot deeper. So I think we're going to come back to that on another video. So I want to make sure everyone is subscribed so you get notified because we are going to be touching on the subject of prayer more times than just now, because it is that important to your spiritual walk. Now, let's just say, though, someone doesn't have a concordance. Let's just say they Google. <laughs> right, that's so. what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do want to point out, though, that I would only Google the verses and then look them up in your Bible, but I wouldn't Google the, the blog that's attached to it. In other words, I want them to understand there's a difference between praying what that, the, what that author of the blog says and praying God's word. So I just kind of want to point that out because too many times we gather our opinions from what a blog says or a commentary says instead of what God's word says. Absolutely. So, Very good point. Yeah. So when we're praying God's word, it's strictly just God's word. <laughs> it's not, well, John MacArthur says this, and this person says this is like, no, it's what does God's word say? And that's what we're praying. Let me give you an example, because this is about as basic as you can get. I'm a new Christian. None of my family is a Christian. How do I pray for my family so that they will become Christian? That's good. Right? I mean, that's huge in many, yeah. many new Christians' lives. So I find those verses, and I'll give you a couple right here that are very basic and simple. As for me and my house, that when you're, the Bible refers to your house, it means all your relatives, all your family, your extended family, your second cousins three times removed. That the Bible says, me and my house. So me and my entire family shall serve the Lord. It doesn't say maybe. It's giving us that promise. The promise that if we choose to believe that promise, because God's word cannot lie, it's an absolute impossibility. So if we choose to believe what God says in the word, and like you said, not what a blogger says, but what the Bible says, me and my house shall serve the Lord. Whoa! Whoa! I didn't know that was in there. And we take that and we go, you know, I can pray for each of my family members and pray that verse over them. You are part of my house. I am a born again, brand new Christian. And now I can include you in my prayer when I use the verse and choose to believe that you too will come to know Jesus. It removes the fear. It removes the wondering. It removes, you know, the delusion that, well, they'll never come to God because that is a lie and that is not coming from God's word. That is coming from someplace between the 18 inches between what we believe in our heart and our head, right? Exactly. Does that help at all? It does. It does. And it, it brought to mind a situation that I'm familiar with. 
a young woman got married. She got married into a huge family that none of them were believers. And, and she was pretty, um, pretty much an outsider for most of that marriage until, but yet she never gave up praying that specific verse for her family, her relatives, you know, her in-laws, all of that. And some of the in-laws were very mean to her. Well, it came about 40 years into that marriage, the family started becoming saved. They started becoming Christians and they had a funeral service for one of the family members. And it was the most God honoring worship time ever. But 40 years prior, a lot of mistreatment, a lot of untrust, you know, just a lot of hatred because this person wasn't like them. Well, but she kept praying. Now, in today's society, it's kind of hard to wait 40 years for an answer. We have a hard time waiting 40 minutes for an answer. But yet, but yet she prayed what you just said. And it's, she's seeing that happen now. And that's the beauty of it. And I know that we've had people who watch this video all over the world. And many of them are saved, but in an unsaved family. Even, you know, very um, horrific situations. And just knowing that they can go to God in this specific situation is just, um, I just really believe that you have just answered a lot of people's questions about the situations that they're in using that specific um, demonstration. So thank you for that. And you know, it brings comfort. Because our comfort is not necessarily in the circumstance. Our comfort is in the knowing that God cannot lie. And when he has made that promise, and we don't have to put a time factor. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I'm sure that through the course of these videos, I will share some stories with you that where I personally had to, even though I was a strong Christian and a believer and, you know, praying the word, but it didn't happen the next day or the next moment or the next year or the next 10 years or even the next 30 years. There are things in my life that took decades before I got the answer, but I never stopped believing because I'm not believing in, in me. I'm believing in what God has promised and God can't lie. So the first thing we get into our heads is that God's word is true. God's word is sure. God's word is yea and amen or yes and amen. God can't lie. God will do what he says he will do. And our job, our only job is to believe it and to voice it. Yeah, I, I really love that. I was just thinking of some verses that I've been um, praying over my own life. And then, and you know, just because of our circumstances and that you've mentioned, um, I, I allow a thought to come in and it's like, wait a minute, that's not me. You don't belong here. That's not true to God's word. So I have to remind myself, wait a minute, God can't lie. And that thought doesn't belong in my mind. So I have to really be um, right. on top of all of my thoughts and on just always recognizing that if that thought does not match what God's word says about me, then it doesn't belong in my mind and I need to get rid of it quickly. So I appreciate well, that. I want to share one other thing along that line, because we are living in a, in a world, not just a society, but in a world right now where hope is rare. Mm -hmm. We're losing hope. There are people all over the world who can't find hope, who may feel hopeless or are in a hopeless situation. But when we are praying that way, when we are literally praying what God's word says, it builds hope. And when it builds hope in our hearts, it builds hope in our minds. And so we begin to think differently. And when we get the attack of all the negativities around us, or even in, you know, like something happens and we chew and, and it, sorry, what I'm trying to say is something happens that affects our thoughts you know, then we get down in the dumps or whatever, and we forget what we know to be true. But the more we voice, the more we even say it out loud, me and my house shall serve the Lord. It becomes part of us so that when we get that negative thought, we can kick it right out. Mm -hmm. No, I will not accept that thought that, you know, my brother doesn't want anything to do with God. And my mother said she would never go to church as long as she lived or any other of those negative thoughts that come in, but instead replace that. As, nope. I'm not going to accept that because God's Bible, God's word supersedes that his word says me and my house 
shall serve the Lord. So that is what I constantly put into my thoughts, put into my mind, and hang on to that and believe it, and we will see it. We will see it come to pass. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. And I know you, um, I know a lot of people watching and listening are saying amen to that as well. So I appreciate that. I have one more question that I wanted to cover today, although I don't think we have a lot of time to go into it deeply. So I'm just going to say, hey, do you have a quick answer for this? And we may have to come back to it next time. The question is, how do I get the authority that some people seem to have in their prayer life? I've had many people, not many, that's the wrong word. I've had a few people in my life that I, that I watch. I'm a very curious watcher. This one lady in one of my, in a church I was attending in Arnold, Missouri, I watched her. I listened to her stories. I, I watched how she lived her life. And I said, I want that. I want that. We, I was saved. She saved. But I came, went up to her and I'm like, I want what you have. There's something different. And it came down to her prayer life. And I've seen the same in your life too. So how do we get, like, I told her, I want, and I didn't say it in these words, but from the way I'm asking you, I want that authority that you have. <laughs> I want that in my life. And so that's what I'm saying to you. How do we get that authority that some people seem to have in their prayer life? I must have known you were going to ask me that question because <laughs> I actually wrote down a couple of things I wouldn't forget, but that is a very common question. And the answer is very simple. You don't have to pray for it. You don't have to ask for it. You don't have to wonder if you're ever going to get it. The Bible tells us we already have it. And again, it comes down to understanding that God's word, what he says is true. If he says that I have that authority, then, and I believe I have it, it's going to change the way I think. It's going to change the way my words come out. Now I'm going to break that down and I'll give you these points along that line. We all know that God made the world and then he made man, right? There's no question there. Then he gave dominion or he gave man dominion over the work of his hands, correct? You know the story in the Garden of Eden and he gave, he gave that happen. But something came along and happened. And Adam committed high treason. He basically sold out, right? We understand that story as well. And then he became the God of the world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. So we don't have any question there. We do understand that, right? But this is the key where very often we stop at that point and forget what God did after that. God devised the plan of salvation. And when he sent his son, Satan couldn't touch him, right? Right. We understand that too. So through that, through that occurrence, that when Christ died, went to heaven, rose again, he gave that same authority that Adam originally had back to us and took it away from Satan. So we can picture that in our minds and understand that that authority is already ours. Yes, there are many ways that we can learn, and you said that we're going to be sharing about this more, how we exercise that, of course. But it comes first to understand that we already have it. And we don't have to look and say, oh, I wish I had the authority she has when she prays, or I wish I could have my pastor's authority. We all have the same authority. There's only one Jesus, one death and resurrection. And when he did that, he gave it to all of us. He gave us, through his death and resurrection, power of attorney to use that authority that we have or that we need in situations in our lives. Does that help? It does. I, I love it. I could talk all day. So I really, I want to continue this conversation, but I want to break it down so that people can digest what we've just taught them. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video now, and then we'll come back, you know, in a couple of weeks, we'll have another video for everyone because what we've done is plant seeds on the I prayer so. seeds. And I know many people are as hungry as I was when I first met you. I was like, wait a minute, 
what's going on in your life? Tell me more. And I haven't let go of you since 2004, or whatever year it was that I met you. It's been uh, probably not that long ago, but it's been a long time. And <laughs> I know other people are saying the same thing. Okay, that's good, but I need to hear more. Tell me more. Tell me more. And so because of that, I just want to just say thank you for letting me have this time with you right now. And just to get a foundational, um, a foundation built on prayer. And yet it's so simple. That's it right. So simple. It's just praying God's word. And for people who don't know, well, I don't know the Bible. Well, just start opening it up and just start reading it. And yes, you can Google. I I'm in fear. What's it? Some verses on fear. Read those. What are some verses about, you know, loving your spouse or, you know, um, whatever the situation is you're in and mostly right now today, it's fear and anxiety and depression. Those are the key things that most people are dealing with. And yet God's word can get you through that by praying his word. So thank you for this, Carol. Is there anything else you want to share before we go? I think intimidation is, is mm -hmm. a huge word that was coming to me as you were talking. Very often when we pray, we feel intimidated by those around us. We feel definitely can feel intimidated by Satan. We can feel intimidated by uh, even our Christian friends. And that is, in essence, a fear, but broken down a little more. And we're going to get rid of that intimidation. We're going to get rid of the whole idea is we can take down, you know, whatever we need to take down in our lives that is negative in a very simple, easy manner. And that is through faith, understanding, and praying, and praying his word. Basic, basic, basic. And so we are trying to simplify them and make them so applicable that your life can just be set free. It's too many times we have rules and obligations. And as you said, intimidation is like, and it just like, it just boils up, but we're here to say, it's not that hard. Just pray God's word and you'll understand just the release that can happen by knowing God's got this. So Carol, anything else before we go? I think that's it for today. I'm excited right. about this and I'm excited about what we're going to be learning together. Well, you always excite me. I, and it's not so much what you say, it's what God, God brings to the table. And that's right. like, it's like, okay, Lord, this is really good. So I just want to thank all of you for watching today. Be sure and hit the, hit the, the like, the subscribe, put your comments down below. We will comment and respond to that. <music>